Hey y'all, I'm Carolina Tony. It's been almost a year since I've been to St. Augustine to the Medieval Torture Chamber. And today we are doing a revisit to see if there's anything new in the exciting art of medieval torture. And we will explore this place, but right after this station, identification. Hey y'all, Carolina Tony here. Thanks for stopping by my channel. Join me as I travel the highways and byways in search of adventure, where we will explore roadside attractions, abandoned places, historical, and even the weird and strange. And hey, maybe a food review or two. Please subscribe. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Be sure to click that bell so you won't miss any future videos. Well, I'll tell you, it's been a year, and this place is still just as creepy as ever. Let's take a look a little closer. So follow me, and I'll show you things that only dwell with the men of evil. Oh, there's a big old executioner there. What a big hammer for busting heads. Another executioner with his face covered. Those are torture stones. Torture stones. Can you imagine having to drag those sound things around all day? Imprisonment cell. Various implements of torture and pain. collection of different types of handcuffs and leg irons shack or another word shackles here is the Judas cradle it's the invention of this instrument is credited to Italian executioner I can't pronounce his name Hippolyte Marshall it appeared in the late 15th century and it was used for the torture of potential witches. I tell you, in the medieval times, it did not pay to be a witch. Here's witch bathing. Tied a witch to a pole and dunk her in the water. This doesn't make sense at all. This happened in medieval Europe as well as prior to the colonization of the Americas. If you were suspected of a witch, they would try to drown you. If you drowned, you were not a witch. If you didn't drown, they'd kill you because you was a witch. So there's no win any way you look at it. It's definitely not a win-win situation. It's a lose-lose situation. Oh, this is just yummy. This poor old fella is laying on this table with rats on his chest just to eat his heart out. Tongue cutting. You use those giant forceps to pull your tongue out and whack it off. Yuck. And of course, here we have the old burning the witch at the stake. Everybody knows about that. And this is the pendulum as gain Y notoriety in Edgar Allan Poe's famous book, The Pit and the Pendulum. 
strapped to the table as the pendulum swings back and forth ever so slowly getting lower and lower until it cuts into your flesh and kills you. The ancient Assyrians, as well as the Aztec, practiced something that they called flailing or peeling the skin where they would take their captives and hang them upside down and pull the skin off of them while they were still alive. Ow. I think I did this last time I was here with the Iron Maiden. And I wanna say, you're not God out of Vita, baby. And they have found an Iron Maiden in a castle over in Europe, thought to be over a thousand years old. And here is the owner of one of its former inhabitants, old Oscar. Vladimir and Impaler, known as Count Dracula, this was one of his most famous things of torture was impaling people on a spike. And tongue nailing. And I think that's my thumbnail from the last video when I was here. Here are some larger than life body parts that's been dissected. This is called a vice for the head. It's been used since the 15th century in the interrogation of prisoners. According to some sources, even now, law enforcement in some Latin American countries will use this to assist in their investigation. And they call waterboarding inhumane. Here is a vice for the hands. Same thing. They want to know the truth, they just put the pressure on your fingers. Or a knee crusher. How about this? Fork under the chin. This is called the anchor. Slow torture. And this, according to some sources, it's used in modern China as well. Neck traps. There's a guillotine. Hmm. Gently pull, gently pull what? Another guillotine. Slightly used. Flagellation. People were beating by many different instruments from thin rods to strong sticks from the ancient times to the present day. This punishment was practiced not only in prisons and in hard labor, but also monasteries, schools, and even households. My teacher wants to use one of these. Here are some items for sexually promiscuous males and females. I won't go into detail how they were used, but you can use your own imagination.
You know, the sad thing about all of this is a lot of this stuff was actually used on human beings. And a lot of times it's because of whoever was responsible for putting these people into this torture. Most of the time, they were put there on just torture table, strapped to the table just to be tortured. And someone got pleasure out of this. Those on the receiving end did not. This is called the armchair of inquiries. During the Inquisition, and even during concentration camps during World War II, this chair was used, or versions of it. Little spikes all through the chair cause pain. There is a sign in here that says, do not climb on the wooden horse. This lady's feet is way down. And as you can see, it's not going to be a very comfortable ride. According to ancient legend, the Roman Emperor Nero had some of his relatives fearing that they would take over, sawed in half. Well, it's just as scary and evil as all as, as it was last year. I hope you have enjoyed our trip to the medieval torture chamber. If you did, be sure to give me a big old thumbs up. Be sure to tell your family and friends. And if you haven't subscribed, by George, go down there and do it right now. But for now, thank you, and y'all have a good day.